Now, day to our Jesus Christus, you're listening to Vatican Radio. Welcome to our live coverage of Pope Francis's historic first meeting with the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, taking place in the Cuban capital, Havana. A warm welcome if you're joining us via Vatican Radio or our Vatican YouTube channel. Also, very special greetings today go to those of you who are joining us on National Public Radio via Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea via CBS Radio News, via Shalom World TV, Salt and Light TV in Canada, EWTN TV English, Net TV, Radio Maria, Salt and Light TV again, Salt and Light, very many of you seem to be joining us via Salt and Light, Telecare TV, Catholic TV and Sirius XM Radio. You're joining us as the papal plane touches down at the Jose Marti International Airport in Havana. I'm Philippa Hitchin and I'm joined now by my colleague Devon Watkins, a familiar voice if you listen regularly to Good our evening, Vatican Radio news programs. Thank you for being here, Devon. Devon from That's Texas. Yes, going ma'am. To, going to give me some help with the Spanish translation when Pope Francis speaks following his meeting with Patriarch Kirill today. The papal plane just literally a couple of minutes ago touching down at Havana International Airport, flying the flags on the front of the Alitalia plane. You can see there the yellow and white Vatican flag and the Cuban flag. Uh, President Raul Castro is here at the airport to welcome Pope Francis, who of course visited the country not too many months ago, just back in September, on his way to the United States for an official visit. This time, however, the Pope is just going to be here for a few hours at the airport for this historic meeting with the Russian Orthodox leader, Patriarch Kirill. The two church leaders are due to meet together for just about a couple of hours in the presidential lounge here at the airport. They'll be accompanied only by their translators and their top ecumenical experts. That's Cardinal Kurt Koch, the president of the Vatican's Council for Promoting Christian Unity, and Metropolitan Hilarion. He's president of the Moscow Patriarchs Department for external church relations. And they'll be holding those talks behind closed doors, so we won't know anything about the conversation. But after that meeting, the Pope and the Patriarch will then exchange gifts and sign a common declaration. And after that, they will hold, we've been told, a brief press conference, uh, speaking probably in Russian and in Spanish, in their native languages. And during that uh, brief encounter with journalists, they're expected to share their impressions and perhaps talk about their hopes for the future of Catholic Orthodox relations. So that's the order of play, if you like, here at Havana Airport. And uh, we will be bringing you live commentary throughout that time, first of all for the arrival, and then you can join us again a little bit later after the private conversation to follow that expected press conference. Patriarch Kirill, who is the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, he arrived in Havana yesterday. He was met at the airport here by President Castro. He's on his first tour of Latin America, visiting Cuba and then also going on to Paraguay and to Brazil. Whereas Pope Francis, as I'm sure many of you know, is on his way to Mexico City for a six-day visit to Mexico. We can see the journalists coming down at the back of the papal plane there. They're going to be following the events. And in fact, during the flight on the way over, it was about a 12-hour flight from Rome to Havana. And during the flight, Pope Francis, as quite often has become his habit now, gave a rather impromptu little press conference, had a chat with yeah, he was very the journalist, didn't he, Devon? You were following that. Yes, I was. He was um, someone shined his shoes even, and someone gave him a sombrero, which is the traditional hat in Mexico. 
Um, one of the, the, the dean, actually, of the Holy See Press Course, Valentina Azaraki of Mexico, is also Televista. She gave him a, a sombrero and to celebrate the journey to her native country. Um, later in the, in the interview, kind of impromptu interview, he, uh, there was a young man who had grown up in Tijuana, Mexico. His name is uh, Noel Diaz of ESNE Catholic Television, in, which is in Los Angeles. And he, um, he, he had grown up in Tijuana to make money. He shined people's shoes. And so whenever he asked the Pope his question, he walked up to him and he shined his shoes and then gave him a, a custom-made shoe shine kit. And the point was that he, he said, um, he told the Pope that he, in, he meant with these presents to remind, the, to remind him and remind everyone that, the, that is an, of the unheralded struggles of ordinary, honest people across Mexico and uh, Mex across among immigrants into the United States. And I think we're going to hear Pope Francis talking a lot more about that during oh, his visit will. to Mexico. Yep. It was uh, a press conference that took place on the flight on the way over between Rome and Havana. Here we can see now President Raul Castro making his way out to the papal plane. He's come to greet Pope Francis, as I say, for the second time in just a matter of months because Pope Francis was here at the airport for an official visit to Cuba back in September of last year. Spent a couple of days in Cuba before going on for his first visit to the United States. So in that sense, there will be no official welcome the the kind of thing that we'll see when the pope arrives later this evening in mexico city this is just an informal visit but uh, clearly president raul castro wanted to be present at the airport him shaking hands briefly there with chani the head of the papal security and other officials who have already alighted from the papal plane and in just a few moments we will see there we see cardinal kurt koch and Cardinal Jaime Ortega, Cardinal Jaime Ortega of Havana, the Cuban capital, Cardinal Koch, who is the Vatican's top spokesman on ecumenical affairs, the president of the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. And there comes Pope Francis himself coming down the steps of the papal plain with a very serious look on his face, aware, no doubt, of the extraordinary, extraordinary historical importance of this occasion. His first ever meeting with the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill. Pope Francis stopping to shake hands with President Castro, exchanging a few words with him, speaking, of course, in his native Spanish but I don't think we can catch any of what they're saying. We may have to wait to hear from the official spokesman, Father Lombardi, later on to find out a little bit more about the conversations that go on during this first part of the Pope's brief stop over in the Cuban capital, Havana. Pope Francis greeting Cardinal Jaime Ortega and other local church leaders who have come to greet him here at the airport. Greeting now Cardinal Kurt Koch and Father Yassant Destivel, the official from the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity who is in charge of the Catholic Church's relations with the Slavic Orthodox Churches. And of course the Cardinal and Father Destivel are two of the people who have followed most closely the journey, if you like, towards this historic meeting. Uh, the encounter, of course, has been years in the making. You may, many of you remember back to the days of Pope John Paul II and after him Pope Benedict, who both expressed many times their desire to forge closer relations with Russia, to meet with the Patriarch. Patriarchs also have said that they wanted the meeting to take place, but up until now, the conditions simply haven't been right. A little bit uh, before the departure for Cuba, I asked Cardinal Koch why he thought that this meeting was now possible, and he said that it was largely because of Pope Francis's comments when he returned from Istanbul 
from a visit to Turkey in December 2014, Pope Francis made it very clear that he was willing to meet the patriarch in any place at any time. And according to the cardinal, that extreme willingness and availability to come and meet the Russian Orthodox leader whenever and wherever he wanted opened the door to this meeting today here in Havana, Cuba. In just a few moments, the two leaders will make their way into the presidential lounge and they will hold a closed door meeting. We may be able to see perhaps or perhaps not some images of Patriarch Kirill who arrived yesterday in the Cuban capital and the two men will hold about a two-hour conversation behind closed doors in the presidential lounge of this Jose, Ma Jose Marti International Airport in Havana. Well, it's very significant that they are meeting in Havana of all places. The, the Pope was just there to, and with this new detente between, the, between Cuba and the U.S., and the Pope was a very, very much a part of this. That's absolutely right. It's extremely significant for both sides, if you like. There have been a number of attempts in the past to try and set up a meeting between the Russian Orthodox leader and the Pope in past years. None of these have been successful. And Cuba, you're right, Devon, is a very significant place for both of them. Russia, of course, such a very significant ally of Cuba throughout the Cold War years, right up until the fall of the Berlin Wall and the beginning of the 1990s. And ever since that time, the popes, but particularly Pope Francis over the last three years, have pushed very strongly to try and end Cuba's isolation, lifting of sanctions which have hit the Cuban people so hard as he was able to see during his visit to the country uh, last year. And therefore, a significant place both in terms of Pope Francis, the first Latin American pope, of <laughs> course, as everyone knows, but also significant for the Russians as well and so in some sense neutral territory yeah. and a very convenient coincidence one making a pastoral They're visit both passing through huh? both <laughs> passing passing through one on his first tour of Orthodox churches and communities in Latin America and Pope Francis on his way to Mexico City where he is due to land at around 7.30, I believe, later this evening local time in Mexico City at the beginning of his six-day pastoral visit to Mexico. He'll be staying in Mexico City. You have some more details about his program, don't you, Devon? Yes, I think I do. He um, He's going to be there six days, as you were saying, and... and Indeed, this is not the... Mexicans have certainly had their fair share of papal visits. Uh, pope um, St. John Paul II was actually there five times during his pontificate. And Benedict the Sixteenth, who is now Pope Emeritus Benedict, say he was there in 2012. So for, but with Pope Francis, it's a little bit different from in Mexico because he's, uh, he's kind of... He's different because he's, he's a Latino like them. He speaks their same language. Um, and he also shares, as all people of the Americas do, this devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe, the patroness of the Americas. And he said that that is one of the, the most important things um, that he wanted to do on this on his trip was, he said his deep desire was to pause before the Our Lady of Guadalupe. And this mystery that she s is studied and studied and studied, there is no human explanation, he said. And he said that even scientists say the image is a, is a thing of God. And so his desire was to, to pray before it, which he will do this Friday um, this after, after he celebrates Holy Mass in the Basilica of the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that is. And he will also walk through the peripheries. He's, um, he'll be in Mexico City. He will be, he'll be staying at the Apostolic Nunciature, which is, will be his home for the next five nights. And from there, he will, um, he'll actually make his way through Chiapas, which is the southern state of Mexico, and it's a very ma a majority of indigenous popu population, and go through the western diocese of Morelia, which is a big, it's a big topic these days because of the hot, it's a hotspot for drug cartels, and so his his message of peace may not it might um, rub some gets a little bit of flack, but he it will be a strong message as we we've, we've come to be used to with Pope Francis. He's not afraid of 
of um, crossing these boundaries, these borders. And speaking of borders, he's, his last stop is on the way to Ciudad Juarez, which is right across the border from my native state in Texas, uh, El pa right across the border from El Paso. And I believe his in an interview last uh, summer, he was saying that his desire was to f kind of to follow this uh, this train that uh, uh, to follow the path of migrants who have come from not just Mexico but from also Central America, South America, to try to make it up to the United States and to follow their their movement. And interestingly enough, he will be right. He will be celebrating mass near the border of um of the united states which has a massive wall to keep out those 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 same migrants and so we can expect a strong message on his part and no doubt a lot of interest in the united states amongst the political leaders to hear exactly what pope francis will say you're right it will be a strong message regarding questions of migration uh, social justice, the rights of immigrants, I'm quite sure. And as you mentioned earlier, the question of violence and uh, the drug trade, which uh, of course is such a problem for Mexico. So a lot of very interesting themes coming up during this six day visit to Mexico. But at the moment we're here in Havana, the uh, Cuban capital where Pope Francis arrived just a few moments ago and was greeted by Cuban President Raul Castro and made his way into the presidential lounge where he is meeting with the Russian Orthodox Church leader, Patriarch Kirill. Just a, a little bit of background on this encounter. As I say, many years in the making, perhaps we could say even half a century in the making since the Second Vatican Council and the really revolutionary change in the Catholic Church's attitude towards Christians from other churches, other communities. Uh, from that time onwards, if we think of Pope John XXIII, Pope Paul VI, who did so very much to try and encourage better relations, particularly with the Orthodox world. Uh, commission, of course, set up, a commission set up for theological dialogue between Catholics and Orthodox in the 1970s. And then Pope John Paul II and Benedict XVI, who have spoken very openly of their desire for this encounter with the head of the Russian Orthodox Church. And so these two men will be there behind closed doors for the next couple of hours. And we're going to leave you uh, for that time and we will be back at the end of the encounter when the two men are expected to come out and exchange gifts and sign a common declaration, not a theological declaration, but a statement of common intent uh, reflecting many of the issues and concerns common to both churches. And after that, they are expected to hold a very brief press conference or encounter with journalists to talk about their impressions and their hopes for the future. So from Devon Watkins and myself, Philippa Hitchin, we will for the moment, to you later. we will be back again in just about an hour and a half from now. So do join us again. You're listening to Vatican Radio. Laudato Jesus Christus.